my dears and welcome back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon and tonight I've got another book talk video to share with you guys and tonight we're talking about Signs Preceding the End of the World by Yuri Herrera. Now I picked this book up a little while ago because after I posted a review on my channel of American Dirt um, I asked for recommendations of something better to read that was written by someone who had you know, more first-hand experience, someone who was Mexican. And I got a lot of different articles pointing me in different directions. And while I was reading through all of those things, this book was one that kept popping up. The title kept popping up, talking about what a great book it was, what a great writer Yuri Herrera is. And so I was intrigued by the title. Honestly, that's what I kind of honed in on. I've got another one another review on another book that was recommended to me coming up in the coming weeks. But this was the one that got here first and this was the one I read first. So it's a short book. As you can see here it's very short. And not even all of that is the novel itself. The novel itself is 107 pages. The rest of the text are the translator's notes because this book was originally written in Spanish and I just wish I knew how to read or speak Spanish so that I could have read it in its original form. Don't get me wrong, it's beautifully translated. Um, it's lyrical, it's poetic, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, but I always feel like there's got to be something lost in translation. I just, I just would love to be able to read it as it was written entirely. Anyway, so it was translated by a woman named Lisa Dillman. And like I said, this is just such a beautifully written story. Science Proceeding the End of the World tells the story of a woman named McKenna who is getting ready to cross the Mexico-America border. She is going to America in search of her brother. She's traveling light because in her mind she'll be right back and so her mom Cora gives her a envelope to give to her brother once she finds him. She's also kind of working with some criminals in Mexico to get their help so that they can help her get across the border safely and they give her a package and tell her where to deliver it etc and she's kind of sent off on her way across the border. Now what compels her brother to cross the border when he does is that he's off in search of land that um, was promised to him by their father and he's an absent father but he's told them that this land is waiting for you so her brother goes off in search of this land and then he doesn't come back. Over time they get a couple of letters from him. One is um, fairly detailed, you know, especially when <laughs> contrasted with the second one. The second one just kind of says, I have a job now, don't come look for me, which would be alarming. You know, if you received that kind of letter from your brother or your son in a new country, you'd feel alarmed. <laughs> so McKenna is off to find him. She wants to know, is he okay? Is what's what's he doing where is he so as mckenna is traveling first from the village then to the town then to the big city before getting ready to cross you know the desert there's a realism to it even though right off the bat this book starts off with quite quite a scene i'll read you the opening paragraph to this book so it goes like this I'm dead. McKenna said to herself when everything lurched. A man with a cane was crossing the street. A dull groan suddenly surged through the asphalt. The man stood still as if waiting for someone to repeat the question. And then the earth opened up beneath his feet. It swallowed the man. And with him a car and a dog. All the oxygen around and even the screams of passers-by. I'm dead. McKenna said to herself and hardly had she said it that her whole body began to contest that verdict and she flailed her feet frantically backward, each step mere inches from the sinkhole until the precipice settled into a perfect circle 
and McKenna was saved. So right off the bat, you know, she's walking through the city and there's a sinkhole that she sees literally swallow a car, a man, and a dog. That's terrifying. <laughs> so scary. And yet it's written so beautifully. Anyway, so just from there, I was completely taken and I couldn't wait to see what was going to happen. So she starts her journey after a bit. She gets everything sort of sorted away and then she starts her journey across the border where she comes across all kinds of different people. She's very tough. There's something very um, beautiful about this toughness. She doesn't take crap from anybody. Anyone who touches her or leers at her or looks at her, she has something to come back at them with. She's not afraid. She's not afraid. And I love that. Where American Dirt is kind of cartoonish and overblown and uses those overdramatic moments to try to convey the fear, this book conveys the fear with what seems like little effort. We're given such a minimal amount of info because the book is so short. We're given such a minimal amount of info, but every single sentence packs such a punch that you're just left speechless. So I'm going to tell you now, if you don't want any spoilers for this book, now is the time to click away. I don't want to ruin any endings for anybody, uh, but I do want to tell you how it ends, just so that you can know, in case you want to know, but maybe you won't get around to reading the book. But I do recommend it. It's like I said, it's short. You can get through it in a couple of hours and it's worth the read. So if you do want the spoilers, let's get on into them. <laughs> so she gets across the border and eventually she starts following a trail that eventually leads her to her brother. And she finds him when she's finally kind of given up hope of finding him because she goes to place after place until eventually the trail kind of goes cold. And then eventually somebody sends her to a military base. And she goes there and she's asking for the person she was told to ask for, the soldier. And he comes and stands in front of her and it takes her a moment to notice that this is her brother. Standing before her, a soldier in the US Army. So he tells her what happened. He tells her that when he first crossed the border he was scared and he was hungry and he went to whoever he could find for help and then eventually one day this woman comes and she's looking for help. She needs someone to come to her home. She is in need and so he volunteers to go and there she, he meets this woman's family including a surly grumpy teenage boy. This family um, needs someone to cover for their teenage son, or I guess a probably 18 year old son, but uh, which is still a teenager. They need someone to cover for him. They need someone to enroll in the army for him because he can't do it and he needs to show up. And um, they let him have his name and his papers and everything. And they teach him all the answers to all the questions that he's going to be asked. And they're like, you go. Um, if you come back, we've got a large sum of money for you. And you know what? You can keep his name. You can keep his name and you can live in America legally. So he goes, he's deployed, and then he comes home and then he goes back to the family and they're honestly kind of shocked that he returned. And they kind of don't know what to do with that info. And they kind of stutter and stammer and tell him, you know, we didn't, we don't have the money that we promised you because we didn't think you'd be back. Uh, but eventually they do come up with some money for him, uh, less than they promised, but it's more than he's ever seen. And then he just kind of stays in the military. And of course, because that's where she finds him. And then um, they kind of go their separate ways. And as she's walking away from him, she opens up the envelope that their mother had given her to give to him. She doesn't give it to him because he makes it very clear that he's where he is. He doesn't want to go back to Mexico. You know, he's serving his country 
or you know the country he now lives in and he says you know I fought for these people there's got to be something worth fighting for and I want to stick around and see what it is and so when she opens the letter from their mom it just kind of says come home now we don't expect anything of you you know she's just kind of begging him to come home but of course he doesn't and then as McKenna continues to walk away she's greeted by the coyote that had been helping her cross the border but a whole lot of craziness went down with that and at least I had kind of written him off as either dead or just done with but he's there and he gives her a folder that had been given to him to give to her and inside of that folder she kind of finds payment for her traveling across the border with the package that the criminals back in Mexico had given her to travel with and those papers are a new identity, a new name, a new home, a new job, everything and then she is now able to also stay in the country and get to live a new life and it's just it's a book that makes you feel a lot of things you know you feel afraid you feel um nervous you feel that urgency that desperation with which she's trying to find her brother and it's just a beautifully told story it's very poetic in the way that it's written and I just really enjoyed it there's one point where she says she's talking of herself and she says that um, she's less the person who she's she's more the door and less the person who walks through it and I just really loved that line there was something about that line that really stuck with me and I think about it <laughs> um, all the time since I've finished reading the book anyway you guys those are my thoughts on the signs preceding the end of the world this book is available on Amazon you know anywhere you buy your books I would assume and yeah if you're looking for a story about the Mexican border you know the Mexican US border and you want to read about it from somebody who lives there and is Mexican I would recommend this and I look forward to reading the next the next book that I've got ordered that's gonna come in it's interesting to hear these stories and to see the way that people feel and the motivations they have that drive them to make the very dangerous journey across that border. It's, it's scary and it's brave and it's, there are, I'm sure are so many heartbreaking stories. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great weekend. And I will see you on Monday with another vlog. Bye, guys.